42 meter motor yacht Callisto may not be as famous as her sister ship, Calypso, which served Jacques Cousteau on his ocean explorations for over 40 years, but she definitely shines in her charm and luxury. Both vessels were built in the 1940s and served Great Britain's Royal Navy as minesweepers during World War II. In the 1950s, the late Irish tycoon and former MP, Mr. Thomas Guinness, purchased the two vessels, leasing Calypso to Cousteau and keeping Callisto as his personal yacht. Callisto has changed owners a couple times since, most recently in 2007, when she traveled from Europe to Phuket, Thailand, her current base. They would need a lot of maintenance. Also, Mr. Bernard get for a good price the boat, but he promised to this woman to save the boat, to keep the boat in condition as a cruising boat, not like make a, a bar, a pier, or it was another life for her to be a wreck in Mediterranean. So he decided to invest uh, his time and his uh, passion to rebuild the boat. And what a boat she is, beautifully tethered to history through structure, old photos and fittings, with seven air-conditioned staterooms spaced throughout three levels. An expansive outdoor entertainment and dining area dominates her stern, and if you somehow tire of sea breezes, an air-conditioned indoor salon and dining room are also available. From Yacht Haven Marina on Phuket's northeastern tip, she plies the Andaman Sea's warm waters between December and April, visiting a number of Thai islands as well as more far-flung locations. Philippe explains that given the number of staterooms, Callisto was well suited for family groups. So I ask, if a family chartered her for a week and mainly wanted to stay in Thailand, what would be the ideal cruising itinerary? I will say, if people are diver, we would I certainly propose Similan and Surin Island, which is heading north. If people are not diver and they want to see more sights and enjoy beach, I will go to, to south, to Pipi Island, Rock Island, and back to finish by Panda Bay the limestone rock reflecting in Andaman Sea. I love diving, but as I'm only on board for two nights, we're exploring a closer destination. Six limestone islands in Thailand's Krabi province known as Koh Phi Phi. Diving is an option here too though, and after waking well before sunrise in Phi Phi Don's Monkey Bay, we cruise south past Phi Phi Lay, pausing briefly to explore this uninhabited island's Maya Bay, famous for its starring role in the movie The Beach. Beyond PP Lay are two smaller limestone islands, Bita Nai and Bita Nok, which offer the area's best diving. We begin our dive off the southernmost island, Bita Nok, entering the deliciously warm 28 degree water world below. While the visibility today isn't fabulous, a brilliant blue pufferfish and huge schools of other colorful fish catch my eye. And I'm especially impressed by the vibrant coral. Diving always makes me hungry, and if, like me, you're a fan of Thai food, there's probably no better place in the world to appease your hunger than aboard Callisto. Chef Sawat can cater for any taste, and on this cruise, his creations for most meals are a mix of Thai and French-inspired dishes. My favorites? The Thai fish and rice soup for breakfast, the pad Thai for lunch, and the tiny dishes of ground chili and fresh chilies and vinegar and fish sauce that accompany each meal. And I'm also a big fan of the beautifully presented fresh coconut water and the Singa beer, which tastes great any time, but especially after the last dive of the day. After a brief stop in Pele Bay to get a closer look at the limestone, we anchor in Pipi Don's southern bay, Tonsai. It's busier than Monkey Bay, but the great thing about anchoring here is that we can go ashore whenever we like. In the morning, this means a jog and steep walk up to a viewpoint, where I look out over the island, grateful for the chance to stretch my legs and excited about what the day is yet to bring. A spicy breakfast, Thai massage, and a scenic cruise back to Phuket. <laughs>